right here on the grandest stage of all here at the Meadowlands, and just won his 13th title at Freehold. He drives day and night. We'll call him the busiest man in harness racing. Cat Manzi has joined us tonight. Cat, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Your family has been in the business. Uh, is that how you got into it? Yeah, I grew up in the harness racing. Uh, as far back as I can remember, we were, uh, we've were we had horses around, and I was either mucking out stalls or carrying water. All of us uh, in the family had to do that. The phone number here for Cat Manzi to call in for your comments or quotes, one eight seven seven cn 8 live Cat, back in 1976, you were here. You were winning in 1976. What's the biggest change you can think of if there's one or two things that comes to mind from then until today? Well, of course, the the most obvious change I think is the the specialization of the drivers uh, and trainers. It used to be you, you trained and drove your own horses, and more and more now there's a, a specialty in drivers and trainers, and the, and they both uh, both colonies have become very good at what they do. Now, the driver colony right now, have you ever seen one as good as we have here today? No, because it just keeps getting better. I mean, there was great drivers here when I first came here, Buddy Gilmore, Benny Webster, uh, Teddy Wing. Uh, these, are, these guys were as good as anybody in their time, of course. And uh, now there's just, uh, just as good of drivers and more of them. The great horses that we've had over the years here, I mean, a Water Baron, 53, Genghis Khan down to 51, staying together, 48. Is the time, is that significant there? Are they, could a Water Baron have gone the last couple of years, you think? Well, you know, to compare uh, horses from different eras, I think, is a mistake. I, you, you have to go like, uh, like you would compare a fighter, you know, from uh, the past to one now. You just can't compare them that way. Back in 1992, you had the assignment once and once only in Arts Place, and you posted a world record and lowered Annihilator's record that it stood for seven years. Take us back to that. Why did you get to drive in Arts Place that night? Well, I'm not sure exactly the circumstances, but uh, John was his regular driver and had to be somewhere else, and uh, Bob McIntosh asked me to go with him, and it was, a, it was a great thing for me. I was pretty excited about having a horse like that to drive. And I don't remember that being a very conducive night to speed either. Tell us about what kind of night that was. Well, I don't remember the conditions or anything, but, uh, you know, I had Art's place, and he was obviously a horse that, you know, could, could do what you wanted. Four, he, was known, until, yeah. he was known to be a little lazy. I knew that, and, uh, you know, I just got him interested early, and at the half moved him and I think I had to go three wide with him onto the front and once he cleared usually he didn't get past. And then a couple of years later you had Beat the Wheel, the Beat the Wheel raced uh, here at a seven o'clock race against Pine Chip and she came out to win in a world record 51 and four and seven years later that record still stands. Yeah, amazing. I mean that was a uh, Beat the Wheel. She was a good mare. I mean fast. Uh, she she was a little bit of a head case but uh, that night beating Pine Chip was a pretty exciting night for me also. Looking back through the old records, Cap Manzi, you were training horses some in the late 70s here. What was that like? Well, I mean, it was a lot of work. I mean, uh, I, I trained horses uh, and, and raced sometimes at Freehold, and then uh, up here at night, I did, uh, you know, it kept me busy, and, you know, I didn't mind it because it's what I like to do, though. Well, Cap Nancy's the all-around horseman, but right now we're going to give everybody a chance for dinner for two as we go out with the quiz to break here and back on September 1st, 1976. Quick Barron won the very first race here on opening night for Ray Raymond, but can you remember who was second in that race? Dinner for two here on the line. Back talk from the Big M on CNA Live. My name's Sam McKee, along with Bob Hayden, our special guest driver, Kent Manzi. The number to call is one eight seven seven CNA Live. Your comments, your calls, and your questions are welcome. And Kent, you've been here since day one, driving at the Meadowlands. When the Big M first opened, it was kind of a melding pot of sorts. You had drivers and horsemen coming from all over North America. Is it harder nowadays for a young guy to get established here, like uh, Stefan Bouchard or somebody like that, trying to break in? Well, naturally, I think it is harder. The, the competition is much tougher, and, you know, it's, uh, you have to prove yourself somewhere else to be able to come in here and do some good. Well, let's go to the phone lines. Robert from Yonkers is holding for the Catman. Robert, thanks for calling Track Talk. Yeah, good evening, guys. How you doing? Um, Mr. Mann, your question um, regarding the uh, dominance you've had at uh, Freehold over the years, um, like Dave Malone dominates at the Meadowlands and Walter Case dominates on circuits that he goes to. Can you speak about um, the respect that you receive on the track and how important that is and knowing the racetrack and knowing the horse and how horses are going to react when you drive them, when you put them on the track at Freehold, do you know the trip you sort of have to get for them? Or, like your reading of the track and that particular horse. And I'll hang up and listen. Thank you, Kat. Okay, well, I mean, when you, when you go out to drive, uh, it's been my uh, experience that the, it's best to try to give it, drive the horse the way the horse likes to be raced instead of trying to race against this guy or that horse. 
I think the best thing you can do is go out and give that, try to race that horse in the way that he likes to be raced. Now, as far as getting respect from the other drivers, you, you, uh, that's something that takes time. You, you earn that because of uh, your, your everyday interaction with them. Uh, it's just a natural thing like in any sport. Is it tougher here for a newcomer to come in for maybe a race or two? If he's going up for the lead, you might be less likely to let someone go you don't know as opposed to a, a top driver? Well, I don't think you can think of it that way. It's not really a personal thing letting them go. A, a driver, you know, can sense whether, you know, it's going to do him any good to let him go or not. I mean, if you have to hurt your horse to let some go, someone go, you, you just don't do it. But uh, if, if your horse is strong enough to leave him out there, well, it doesn't matter who's driving. You, you, you have to leave him out there. The phone number to call for Track Talk is 1-877-CN8LIVE. Cat Manzi, the very popular driver here at the Big M, our special guest this evening. Right now, let's go back to the phone lines. Joe from Clifton is with us. Joe, thanks for calling. Hey, guys, how you doing? Uh, Cat, congratulations on all your success. Um, you. I have one quick question for you. Out of uh, all the races and uh, all the big races and harness racing and um, you know the ones that you haven't won, what is the one prize that you have your eye on that would really set your career straight? Thanks a lot, guys. Well, I mean, uh, if I have to pick out one race that I'd like to win, and there's there's a few of them left, uh, the Hamiltonian would be, you know, the one if I had to pick one. Cat, you've won more money in million-dollar races than anybody else who hasn't won a million-dollar race, but you came awfully close back in 83 in the Wilson there. Uh, d tell us about that moment, and do you ever look back at a race like that and say, geez, if, what if I'd done this or if I'd done that? You know, no, because that race in particular, uh, True Tone Lobel, which was one of my favorite ho two year olds I ever raced, he was just a great little horse and uh, trained by my cousin Jeff Lomar, uh, Eddie Lomar's younger brother. And uh, it was just a, it was a great situation to be in to have that horse come into that, uh, that race in that condition. But I thought, you know, I raced that horse the best he could go and I, and I, we were all out at the wire. We just, we got caught at the end, but it, was, it wasn't because of anything I think I could have done. One eight seven seven C and eight live is the number to call for track talk from the Big M, and be sure and join us every Friday, including tonight for Happy Hour Fridays down at Kahuna Wedge. That continues all through the month of June. There's live entertainment tonight. It's the reggae band Exodus Supreme performing food and drink specials and lots more. Stay tuned to C and eight more track talk from the Big M with Catello Manzi coming your way. So stick with us. And this is Track Talk from the Big M, one eight seven seven cn 8 live is the number to call. Sam McKee with Bob Hollywood Hayden and Catello Manzi. Cat, last year you won the Goldsmith Maid with the two-year-old trotting filly Cyrinx Hanover. There's some talk about possibly trying her against the boys in the Hamiltonian this year. In your opinion, can she go with the Colts? Well, I think if you watched her as a, as a two-year-old, uh, I mean, there was no question she was better than the two-year-old Colts were uh, on, uh, on the night of the, uh, the big races. So... You know, it wouldn't surprise me if she could go out there and beat them. It's an unusual thing, but she, if there's one that can do it, she's a big, strong mare, and, and no end to her there wasn't last year, so. one eight seven seven c and 8 live the number to call. Let's go back to the phone lines. Norman from Freehold is joining us. Norman, thanks for calling. Hey guys, how are you, Kat? Good, thanks. Um, now that Garden State Park is closed, and, you know, the Meadowlands shifts over to the thoroughbred meet, where are you going to wind up at night during the nighttime action, Kat? Well, you know, probably at home with my family once in a while, which wouldn't be so bad either. But, uh, you know, I'm not, there'll be times where I'll have to go somewhere and race horses, and uh, what, whatever happens, happens. I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about it at all. Kat, you've done pretty well with some trotting females. Uh, her, her, Tiffany Star, Winky's Goal, Santa Royale, uh, any, any trick to that? <laughs> no, there's no trick to it. Uh, you, the trick, I guess, is getting the, to somebody to hand you the lines for one of those. Is it opportunity as important as talent sometimes around a place like this with a competition so high? Well, I'm sure there's no substitute for talent, but you have to be able to, you know, to, to show off your talent. You have to have something to do it with, and you have to be lucky enough to get the, the right horses. There's, you know, there's limited horses. Now, as Norman mentioned, you drive day and night freehold in the Meadowlands. Does that ever wear you down? I mean, that's a pretty hectic schedule you keep up. Well, you know, a lot of people ask me that, but, uh, you know, I'm doing something I like, and I'm, it doesn't bother me at all. There comes, you know, like the freehold just closed, and now it's, it comes at a good time. I'm a little tired of it, but, uh, you know, now I have my days off, and uh, later on I'll have my nights off. So I have a nice schedule. I have a great life, really. one eight seven seven c and 8 live the number to call back to the phone lines. Jack from Oceanport is with us. Jack, how are you? How you doing, guys? Hi, Cat. Hi. Uh, I was at Freehold a, a month or so ago. I think you won a horse called London Express that came from New Zealand, and I got lucky enough to go in the winner's circle with you. And uh, 
come, a horse coming over like that and you race him on a half mile track, he's probably going to be over at Meadowlands later in the meet. How do you think he'll do uh, in a horse like that, difference between a half mile and a mile track? And which do you like driving better on a half mile or a mile? Well, it's an interesting question. You know, you know, you came across the horse that I think is designed for half mile track. That London Express. He's a he's a great, nice horse. I mean, I think he's as good as any horse on a half mile track. But he has great early speed. I mean, gets off the gate like a rocket and uh, and likes the front. Now, I'm not sure how that'll translate to the mile track, but. Uh, you know, he may have to make an adjustment, and maybe that'll take away some of his, uh, you know, his better qualities. I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. Jason from Bloomfield is joining us next on Track Talk. Jason, thanks for calling. How you doing? Uh, hi, Mr. Manzi. Uh, hi. Uh, Two-part question, actually. I recently read a study at um, <clears throat> Freehold, uh, an Internet study that said over the course of history that six out of basically every 10 races, the one horse that Freehold comes in the money. My question is, have you had um, real success out of the one hole? Second part question, is there any specific post position at the Meadowlands that you'd like to leave from to truly give you an edge? Well, you know, I've heard people say that the Meadowlands, the rail is not a great position, and you know, there may be something to that, but uh, on any track I go to, if you want to give me the rail, that'll be fine with me. Well, be sure and stay tuned to uh, CN8 later on this evening at midnight, as a matter of fact, for the Inside Track, which is our weekly recap show with highlights of the racing action here at the Big M. Catch the Inside Track with Dave Brower and Bob. Track Talk at the Big M. We're back with more Track Talk in Hollywood Hayden. Once again, you have stumped the audience with your quiz question for this week. Quick Baron won the very first. One of the best horses. And Greg Wright trained, and Greg Wright won the first four Racing here at the Big M when it first opened had to be so competitive with horses coming from all over the country. You had a lot of people that followed Joe DeFrank from Windsor. You yourself came from Monticello, a half mile track to the mile track here. Was that tough to adapt to? Well, it's, a, you know, it's an unusual adjustment. I mean, especially if you've never raced on one. I mean, I had come from Monticello and had, had no experience on the mile track, so it took a little little getting used to. you got to be careful not to overuse a horse. Okay, is the mile track a fairer shot for horses than the half mile track? Well, I think the best horse will win more often on the mile track. I do. Okay, let's go back to the phone lines. Kevin is joining us. Kevin, thanks for calling. Uh, good evening, Mr. Manzi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my question to you is, when you drive for top stables, do you uh, drive different than if you drive for you know, trainers with just a couple of horses? Well, I don't think I drive different. You know, you when you drive for a top stable, it usually means you're coming. You, it's a competent trainer. It gives you a little more confidence, and that will make you be just a little more aggressive. I, you know, it's nice to drive for someone that you know has got a horse ready. I like it. Cats in '76 uh, tells us a couple of the changes in helmets and pylons and track surfaces. I mean, how how much has it improved? How noticeable has it been? Well, I think the biggest change, uh, I don't know how we went so long with, it, with hub rails, but the taking, out, taking out the hub rail was the biggest uh, change in harness racing as far as safety. It was the greatest thing they could have ever done. I mean, it gives you somewhere to go when there's a, when there's a problem. They've, uh, they've made the helmets better, the, the safety vests. Uh, you know, they, they've made some improvements, but uh, it's still not a picnic out there. Well, tomorrow night, not only do we have the Cutler Memorial here for 200000 at the Big M, we also have the New Jersey Sire Stakes final for the three-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacers, 150000 on the line there. And as we take a look at the field, that entry looks awfully tough to beat. And, Kat, I'm sure you're hoping Tupac is the best of that entry. Yeah, I am. Uh, Tupac, he's a, he's a nice little horse there for uh, uh, Mark, his model. He won a great race for me last week. Um, I'm expecting good things from him. Two weeks ago, I think everybody thought it was kind of a fluke when he won because it was a hot pace. Here, as last week, he went first over, and I don't think anybody thought he was going to last. What were you thinking of mid-stretch? Well, I was pretty sure he could make it. I just wanted to keep after him and not get surprised. That's all. This seems like a cold who is improving with every start, getting better and better. Can he step up and go with the big boys in the three-year-old pacing division? Well, you know, there's no reason why he couldn't. It, uh, you know, if it's in there, you know, Mark will get it out of him. He's a good trainer. The ebb and flow, Cat, of catch driving is something that's kind of hard to figure. For a while, it seems like you're on a lot of live mounts, and then business kind of tails off. With all your success, is that hard to deal with? 
Well, you know, it's it's not easy to deal with, but it's uh, you know it's something you have to get used to. The important thing is that you don't, uh, when things aren't going good, you don't get pressing too hard. I think is important. Cat Manzi, thank you very much for joining us tonight on Track Talk from the Big M. Next week, our special guest will be Richie Silverman. And once again, we request that you stay tuned to CN8 tonight at midnight for the Inside Track, our weekly recap show with all of the racing highlights from this week. For Bob Hollywood Hayden and Cat Manzi, I'm Sam McKee. We'll see you next week on Track.